Well, there you are. You caught me. Busy man like myself, still have to get me bread and butter for the week. But you know what I hate about these shopping centres? Can never find me car. Don't know where to the park it. Hey, what can I say? That's Shane's world. Today, on Shane's World, it's all about trucks. When I say trucks, I mean pickup trucks, monster trucks, Bigfoots, that kind of a thing. And the one we're going to talk about first is my own. Colossal machine. But it doesn't half attract attention. I suppose I'm a bit of an extremist myself, and that's why I've got it. From the young'uns from two years of age till the elderly, Everyone is just mesmerised by the whole, I know, colossal great big machine it happens to be. It's absolutely brilliant. When people ask me what do I drive when it comes to everyday regular vehicle, this is the one. Now, to say the least, when I go to supermarkets to do the regular shopping as everybody does, before long, as you can imagine, because it attracts so much attention, I end up signing the autographs. Now, sometimes it's because of who I am and sometimes because of the truck. One way or another, I always get recognised. Do you like it? Yeah. It's not bad for going shopping in, is it? No. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's big, isn't it? Yeah, well, the good thing about it is, right, when you can't find a, a parking space, yeah. you go on top, <laughs> into reverse four-wheel drive, and you're up on the roof. <laughs> Do you want to get in? Do you want me to lift you in? Or you reckon you're all right? Hey, that's what happens when you're young and fit, you know what I mean? Do you want to get in? Come around there on this side with me. One foot up here. i tell you what I do, right? Do you ever see in, when you're in school, does anyone ever give you a bunt over the fence? Right, you put one foot in there. That's the one. <laughs> Do you want the keys? Yeah. Do you want to take her home? Yeah. Nice one, here you go. All the best, Roy. It's gone. <laughs> You've just finished with your boyfriend, oh, have you? Baby. I'm the man. <laughs> right, give me t it's going to take me about five minutes to climb out of this, Roy. Come on, he's out. You're a big boy. <laughs> Do you want to do one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, no, put them together. Yeah, don't together. Any photographers? God bless you. Oh, well, you smell the lovely, jobs. ladies. Is there? smell Thank lovely. Thank you. You have to do two, because, like, you know. <laughs> Sounds. Thank you, Thank you very much. You're very welcome, you. girls, right? I'll be over for my holiday in a minute, yeah? Nice one, there was a deal. Bring Keith with you next time as well. He's, tell you what, he's about two minutes around that corner. He went down the garage. He did. He did. <sighs> He'll be back. I, I'll like send him it. in to you, right? I'll send him in to you. Alright. So, yeah, we're watching from the window, we, aren't we? We knew who he was. You knew straight away? Oh, yeah. I didn't either, I didn't believe me. <laughs> Are you boys on fans? Little. Yeah. Keith. What, what do you think of Shane? 
He's nice. I don't like his red bit in his hair. Look better blonde. I notice you were trembling a little bit there. I saw the hands going. <laughs> yes, oh yes, it is for me. So how many other superstars do you get down to uh, to your little shopping centre here? None. No, never. Never. So it's, it's made your day? Only, um, who was the one that opened up? Larry Grayson, was it? <laughs> That's about it. That's all we get in Daventry. Do you think they're on, they're on a par, Larry Grayson and Shane? No. Yeah, Shane's a bit, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you've got it's that wink. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just that my husband's not listening to all this. Oh, he'll, he'll get a copy, he'll get a copy. All right, boys. Who is this for? Nick. Nick. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Sound. Can you do any tricks on that, can you? Yeah. What can you do? Uh, back ups. Jumps, streaks, and that. You know I'm going to ask you for a demonstration, don't you? Mm. No, in exchange, like, in exchange. Give us a demo. Show us what you can do. Oh, no. Don't be embarrassed now, you know what I mean? No. No problem. Do, you do some back hops. Uh, can I do one? Do one back hop, then. One back Give us a look at you. Hold on. Wait, hey, look. Good man yourself. Took me about four years to learn that. There you go. God bless you. The one thing about this truck is the hardest thing you'll ever drive. From, it's most definitely not a comfortable ride. As you can see, we're all over the place. It feels every bump in the road. Although you think it's so big, the suspension is so big, it should glide over things. Complete opposite. The steering, it's like steering a boat. It's, it's, it's like one of those old cars where you constantly just drive it like that, trying to keep it level on the road. Same as a motorbike, you have to watch for cambers, because the, the wheels want to follow those cambers and it changes all the time. But I'll pull over and I'll talk you through the whole truck itself and why it does that. How's it going? First of all, let me put it in valet mode. Otherwise, it just locks itself up and does the whole lot. Now let me go from uh, top to bottom. I believe that's the right way to work it. As you can see from pretty much everything, from last nut and bolt has been changed in this truck. From interior, as in some bucket seats, little steering wheels, gear knobs, door panels, speakers, electric windows. The whole lot has been changed. Now, unfortunately, my system, as in stereo system, isn't up and running at the moment. I've had some problems changing it around, that kind of stuff. Exhaust, let me start with here. This is actually off, as you see, the AC Cobras. The usual system runs straight through the back and all the way out the other side, but because it's jacked up so high, you can see the whole exhaust system and as they get rotty and rusty and corroded, it doesn't look a nice sight whatsoever. So we had this one put on, specially customised, as pretty much everything else on it. To make it road legal, you have to put these extensions on the arches. Now, didn't really want to blow out the arches and do all that kind of stuff. It's too much work, to be honest. So, a bit of plastic, some fitters here. God knows where we found them. And on it goes. Passes the MOT, nothing to worry about. Suspension. Now, your regular truck comes with a single shock and some little leaf springs, but you don't have to have a double shock. Again, it's more for, for looks, puts the machine together. If you're gonna take it off-road, by all means, it does help you out in terms of it's solid and there's no messing when it comes to bottoming out and that kind of stuff. There's a lot of travel in these wheels. And with these tires, if they do travel up so high and catch any of the body, there's no forgiving, they just rip it straight off. It's a solid bit of rubber. To come around the front, 
Aye. A whole load of chrome, that's what it looks like. Um, again, it's all been custom made to fit the truck. This A bar, with the, the bit of plating and stuff on that, and it, it's just to protect whatever's under there. Not that you're gonna hit anything because it's so high up anyway. But if you come down under here for a second, all this here, these hoses and stuff, is hydraulic steering. It did have a power, a irregular power steering unit on it, but uh, to say the least, it wasn't near strong enough to take the pressure of those big tires. And the tires are actually 44s, they're called, which they're just short of four, four foot high, which is quite a, a, lot, a hell of a lot of rubber when it comes to weight and trying to shift them about and stuff. So like I said, we've had to use this uh, special steering system, which some guys in Sweden invented, as far as I know, because um, they take some of these trucks across the Everglades and that kind of stuff. Um, again, we've got some of these uh, dampers and shock absorbers in under there, if you can see it. What that basically does is, because the truck, again, is so high, on braking and that kind of thing, there's a lot of travel. You know, once you brake hard at all, the nose dips down, it's solid. So you have to uh, get it as little as possible to, uh, you know, as a, as a boat. That's, that's how they feel, they're like a boat. So the more shocks, the stronger she is. All together, I think there's 24 shock absorbers, which is out the door. But the man who actually built this truck, Nigel, we're gonna have a little chat with now at the moment, because he's actually uh, building a big, big one. This is as big as it can really get when it comes to road legal. We're never gonna see a proper monster truck. Hey Shane. How are you noise? Know, Mr. Crack? How you doing, mate? Good. Not so bad, not so bad. What do you think? Didn't think it was going to be that big. <laughs> that's, what, say. that's what you say every time. Absolutely. That's what you awesome. say every time. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank Poetry you very in much. motion. <laughs> well, it's man. not in motion quite yet. We're getting nearly, there. Nearly. Nearly. So, uh, to say the least, tell me about it. Well, probably the first thing everybody notices, Shane, is the wheels and tyres. They're 50 inches tall, 24 inches wide. They're from uh, an agricultural uh, machine, a Terra tyre. Um, they're fairly low air pressures in them, even though they carry a big weight. And it's right. usually the first thing everybody spots. Uh, so would there be more rubber than air, in respect of how big they are? Yeah. Yeah, there's probably only five PSI of air in there, when you, your average road car would be 35. OK. So it's quite low pressure from that point of view. Um, they're connected to some ex-military axles that we've modified, um, popularly known during the war as a deuce and a half. Right. Um, it's uh, an American military truck axle which we've modified and put various bits on to enable us to fit the suspension to. Just to take the strength and the size of the wheels and stuff. Yeah, it's all beefing it up basically. Yeah. It needs to do things that it was never designed to do. <laughs> so we have to add a bit to that. In terms of suspension, we decided to go with the pros from America. Those are Night Stalker gas charged racing shocks. Right. Your, uh, your Bigfoot fella, the, the worst world, famous monster truck in the world, he races on those. So does Grave Digger, Samson, Predator, all the big race trucks so you're in, in America. in with the big boys. In with the big boys, but it comes with a big price, unfortunately, about oh, okay. £1,000 each. Four of them. The Yanks use eight, I can't afford eight. Hey, we get there though, isn't that right, Nigel? <laughs> oh, every time, every time. So what's running the machine then? Well, the engine is an unusual one, really. We've got an 8.2-litre Cadillac engine. Right. Uh, a lot of people would use a Chevy or a Ford. We went with a Cadillac because it has the biggest stock displacement that you can get. 650 horsepower in there. It's pretty powerful. <laughs> um, and we have it on open headers, so it's pretty noisy. 
No, as I know you said um, it's not exactly running in terms of we're not going to be crushing any cars today, but are we going to get a drive in it? Yeah, I think we can let you have a go. I'll just pull it out onto the street so it's pointing one way for you and you'll be off. Okie dokie. Does it look that hard to get into? Massive man. Thought that little silver yoke was going to get a little crush in there. Nigel, if you can force run me through uh, what I have to do in terms of how to drive it, etc., I'll just stand up on the side and take a nice and handy note. Come in and I'll show you what we do. What we have to do to get her going, really? Surely. Well, most of it's like some of your race car stuff, but I'll run you through what it does just so that you know which buttons to press. Uh, four wheel steering, as I said when we were talking at the front of the vehicle. Front steering is handled on the steering wheel just like your regular car. Okay. Rear steering's handled over here on a joystick. Um, that's usually only used for exhibition use. We won't use that when we're racing, but uh, you can probably figure a bit of that in this afternoon. We can have a play with that one. Stick shifter just like a regular automatic transmission. Okay. Park neutral reverse drive. Um, floor brake and throttle just as we already are. When you've got the engine running, because of the load that the hydraulic pump pumps paste on the engine, mm -hmm. um, if you're actually gonna do any steering when you stood still, you need to feed in a little bit of throttle. Otherwise the pumps will stall the engine for us. That's a little bit like my old JCB I have at home. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> Over here is like the main control panel. This is where we keep things safe. There's a master switch for, for the whole ignition system, which we turn on. Right. We then need to turn on the fuel pumps, and we can punch for start. So, is it okay for me to actually sit here and just watch what you're doing before I actually get in it myself? Yeah, of course. Okay, dokie. Let me hold on tight, Buck. It's your turn. Absolutely, can't wait, man. Make some room. That's the water pump that's gone. Um, it's a little tiny part, little water seal on the drive shaft of the water pump. Um, basically, the engine's got a little bit hot, produced a bit of steam, blown out an old seal. The uh, 
the water pump could be anywhere between uh, 10 and 24 years old because it came with the engine. We actually have a new one on order, but it didn't arrive in time for Shane to have a little play today. Um, so I'm not surprised, but when you're making that much horsepower, you produce a lot of heat, put a lot of strain on an old water pump. But uh, at least he got a chance to have a little bit of a drive round, and uh, we'll get it fixed up, and then he can come back and jump some cars with us. Well, unfortunately, you saw what happened. I come down here today to drive the truck over some cars. I was all excited, but the truck didn't get finished in time. And the first time it was ever driven was around the block, as you lot very saw. That was a, uh, that was the, the, you know, the debut, the debut truck drive, and uh, things go wrong. That's what test driving's all about. We blew a water pump. Unfortunately, I was the last one in it when it happened. I do feel genuinely bad about that because, you know, it's not my truck at the end of the day. But a man knows what he's doing. They'll be back on track as soon as they get their water pump. Uh, not today, mind you. Maybe a couple of weeks, ready for the next show. As long as you know it's real, that's Shane's world. Nigel. Sorry for breaking your truck from the heart. That's all right. No man. hard feelings. No hard feelings at all. These things happen. They do that. It's uh, it's going to have a few more problems before we're finished with it. So, uh, and you found more than anybody I know. God bless. Rest in peace. But you know yourself. First time out the door wasn't too bad. It was expected. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think she did well for for first time out today. But well, I've had a good day anyway. I'm off home myself. Tail between my legs. <laughs> I'll see you again, please. It's good guys. seeing you, Shane. Come back soon. Thanks very much. Bye now. To say the least, I've had a good day. Unfortunately, it didn't go as planned. As long as this old baby gets me home, there'll be no problems at all. That's Shane's world for you. Don't you forget it.